Welcome to Healing Garden TV. My name is Kuro Cacinero and I am telling you interesting stuff about interesting plants. So what you see here is not marijuana, even though it looks like it from far. And the police already suspected it to be marijuana and made an inspection. The result was no one knows what this plant is. So what is this plant? This plant is called Artemisia annua. It's the annual wormwood or sweet any or sweet wormwood. It has several names, but the Latin name is Artemisia annua. Artemisia uh, has many different types of uh, there are many different different types of Artemisia. Some of them are used for cooking, others are used in medicine um, in different forms. And this particular one is from China. So. The story of Artemisia annua goes like this. It was used for more than 2000 years in Chinese medicine against fever, but it was only one herb among many other herbs. Then, in the 1960s, Mao Zedong said to a set of scientists, we need a cure for malaria that is quick, efficient and has no side effects. So they systematically um, studied the different herbs, tried them, and discovered that Artemisia was actually curing malaria. So they could cure malaria and thus they won the Vietnam War because they could cure malaria. That's why the Vietnamese War was won by the Asians, or one of the reasons for it. So um, then the story goes on. Very quickly the pharmaceutical companies said, wow, this is big. I mean, malaria, malaria. <laughs> you know how many people die from malaria every second? It's a huge problem. By the way, the Bill Gates Foundation uh, recently, yeah, the Bill Gates Foundation is, is also investigating in Artemisia and they have spent more than a trillion, do uh, a trillion dollars, like huge amounts of money. Um, yeah, but what is the pharmaceutical industry uh, interested in? Not in the plant, but in the substances that are in the plant, one of which is artemisinin. So they created the malaria medic medicine from artemisinin, and uh, the artemisinin malaria therapy is the number one therapy for malaria in the world. But the problem is that in the last years, more and more malaria becomes um, resistant against uh, artemisinin. Why? Because artemisinin as an isolated substance causes resistance. But the World Health Organization denies that. They are saying if you use the tea it creates resistance. And people that have a brain say no look if you isolate substances from their natural context it's normal that uh, nature adapts to it. It's the same with antibiotics. Uh, why are viruses becoming uh, resistant against, by, uh, against antibiotics? Because if you have an isolated substance, uh, nature is intelligent, viruses are intelligent, they uh, adapt. So I say that if you use the whole tea, then you have the artemisinin together with hundreds, uh, more than 200 different substances. and. Um, I mean, it's just a, a question of if you have a brain or don't have a brain. Um, so, I mean, we have this problem everywhere. We are isolating things and then we think this is the thing. But isolated things do not exist. Things do not exist. Just think about it. What we call a thing, what we isolate from the world and say this is that, does not exist in this way. It exists for this very short moment in time short moment in time that we look at it yeah let's say this is a plant yeah but if I would observe this plant for how it grows how it appears how it disappears I would realize that it's a process that first it's a process and not a thing and the second thing is that this process is connected with the whole world everything in the world is connected with everything in the world and slowly um, more and more people are noticing that and so herbal medicines are more becoming more popular, uh, integral thinking, uh, whole thinking, wholeness, thinking in wholeness, thinking in connectedness, interconnectedness. 
uh, and sustainability and all of that stuff. So this is uh, the story of Artemisia, but this is just the beginning, because <clears throat> after it was being used against malaria, um, people also started using it against um, AIDS, because the areas where malaria uh, is heavily uh, killing people, uh, also many people have AIDS. So um, very small NGOs that uh, work uh, with Christian ideals and not with money ideals started planting these uh, Artemisia everywhere in the tropics and with great success, always in war with the World Health Organization or the World Unhealth Organization, however, however you want to call it. And um, yeah, then they use it also together with Moringa, which is another great plant which I will tell you about later. They used it also against AIDS and, of course, I would be a criminal if I said this plant cures malaria and this plant cures AIDS. And, of course, that's not true. But um, the experience shows that many people have better lives using this plant as a tea, as an extract. And that's just a fact. And uh, you can read the testimonials. Well, I mean, it's all the time being suppressed and criminalized and it's a, it's a crazy story but anyway we are here to change that so then the story goes on it's not only about malaria and AIDS by the way it was also used with Ebola um, because yeah it's it's a very strong plant so but it was not only with that it was also and this is where it starts becoming really interesting and really controversial um, when they discovered uh, that it has um, effects on cancer, on very on many different types of tumors. And that was the point when in 1992, Dr. Zing from Washington, D.C. Um, patented the um, cancer therapy based on artemisinate, artemisunates, some substances from the artemisia. So there is a patent for uh, uh, cancer therapy. You can check this on my website, there's the link to the patent. But the tragic thing is that it was never produced as a medicine. Why? Dr. Zing himself in an interview states, well, no one is interested in this because it's too cheap. This is unbelievable. I mean, if Dr. Zing wouldn't, didn't, hadn't said that himself, um, I wouldn't believe it either, but um, imagine just for how little money you could create an effective cancer therapy. Probably. Uh, again, this is controversial because you cannot uh, go there and say, well, all the people who have cancer, listen to me, this plant will cure cancer. This is, of course, bullshit, because cancer is a very, very, very complex uh, disease which um, is, uh, has very deep roots and... As far as I know, those people who survived cancer, they survived it not because of this or that plant, but because they changed their life entirely and so on, and maybe because they had good luck and because uh, God was uh, in a good mood. I have no idea. So I'm not saying that this cures cancer. I'm not saying that this cures AIDS. I'm just saying that there are many people who are uh, using it and who are reporting incredible results, or let's say results that make us hopeful or at least me so again if i told you that i use it against any type of flu as soon as i have a flu i drink a tea from it and the flu is gone if i told you that i would be a criminal again so look at how crazy the laws are so i cannot say that even though it's true even there's freedom of speech i cannot say to you that if i have a flu i take this tea and it's gone so so i'm not telling you that okay um and also, um, of course, the laws in the European Union are really strict, so uh, no one can just uh, uh, sell medicine. You have to be a multi-billion dollar company to have all the rights and uh, the money to do this registration stuff. So this is not a medicine, okay? So if you buy this on my website, this is not a medicine. And also, the same applies to food. There's the novel food um, law, which means that uh, most plants that exist in the world are not considered as food in the European Union. Only those plants that have always been used as food in Europe and all the different plants, different hundred thousands of plants in the world, 
that have not been used as food traditionally in the EU have to be pro um, registered through a really uh, long and expensive process, which again leads to the same conclusion that you can only do that if you are a rich multi-billion company. So this is not a food, okay? This is not a tea. This is not a medicine. This is not a food. Don't drink it. Don't take it. Don't use the tincture for ingestion. Only use it as air freshener. So how do you use it as air freshener? It depends. If you, for example, use the leaves, you can take two and a half grams a day or five grams a day or 10 grams a day. 10 grams is really high dose. It's really high. So normal dose would be two and a half grams. This uh, dose you put in two liters of water and boil it for five to ten minutes and then you smell on it. You just enjoy the great uh, smell in the house because it's really sweet. That's, called, that's why it's called sweet wormwood. And then um, you enjoy your life. You might start sweating a bit. Um, yeah. If you had a flu before, afterwards, it might be gone, but of course not because of the tea, only because, or the, the air freshener, uh, only because of the placebo effect, okay? This is not a medicine, this is not a food, this is only an air freshener. So, I hope you learned some about Artemisia anua to uh, summarize. Um, was used in traditional medicine for thousands of years. Was rediscovered in 1968 against malaria. Uh, the Nobel Prize for Medicine was given to the scientists who did that in 1968, 40 years after. So then it was also being used uh, in the context of AIDS and development aid for many uh, decades. And then the Western world became interested in it when uh, more and more people reported results uh, on cancer. And there's also a lot of research being done. So this is not bullshitting, okay? So today everybody tells this cures cancer, that cures cancer. So this is bullshit. This does not cure cancer. But there is research on it and you can check this and I will uh, provide you with the links and then you can see it for yourself. So, and um, yeah, so more and more people are asking for it and uh, it's really a hot topic and if you want to get this herb um, as an air freshener of course you can order it directly from our website um, we'll be at your home as soon as possible uh, we give you a really good price because this is you see all ecological farming you you see here's the the what do you call this stuff uh, this is all organic, you know, there's no poison here, there's, um, it's great. And also I pay my workers well, um, and uh, we make everything fair play. So, yeah, if you want to support this incredible product uh, project, by the way, uh, I mean, I don't want to rub more of your time, thank you for your attention, but um, just one more little thing, in between... You see this little thing here. Um, oh well, let's see if you can see it. Yeah, this is Mucuna pruriens. Not this one, but this one. It's still very little, but in one or two years it will grow big. And this uh, is also another big plant, another big story, um, because this is a bean. When it becomes big, uh, it has a lot of beans, and these beans they contain dopamine, okay? Dopamine. Um, the pharmaceutical industry makes uh, medicine against uh, Alzheimer. Um, I use it against depression. Oh no, uh, wait. If I told you that, I would be a criminal. So I don't use it against depression. I just use it every day, but just, uh, just for fun, okay? Um, anyway... Um, it's it's an incredible plant that uh, you will hear about in the future more and we will produce on a big scale as well. Uh, right now we only have Artemisia, Pine Pollen and Cystus, which is already quite something. And I hope you enjoyed this video and um, please, if you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, comment this video, like this video, share it, because uh, all publicity... All, all publicity I'm doing is this types of videos. I'm not doing any other publicity. So you can help me a lot if you just spread the word. 
for this 21st century web 2.0 based business. Okay, I love you and I hope to hear about you as well. Tell me your story, become part of this project and enjoy your life. See you.